brought to you by Knights of Awakening, Lyeth's House of Shadows, and the letter Molnir. This is the Labyrinth. Well, everyone, today my goal is to go through a little bit of energy work discussion with you on video. And I know I don't do a whole lot of videos for the energy work because it really doesn't translate too much better in video than it does into any other kind of method. I mean, I suppose I can wave my staff around and, and things like that. Um, I could always take my hood and, you know, try and put it up more over my headset here. See if I can't look a little spookier, you know. Does that help with your energy work? Um, and I can always show off my my Thor's hammer pendant or my Jedi pendant, but the, these things don't really help you understand energy work a little better, but maybe seeing seeing my face and the look of my face will show you how serious I am about this. Maybe if you see that I do take this seriously, you'll get a better idea of what it is I'm talking about with energy work. And maybe if nothing else, if you see a person talking about this instead of just a nameless, headless voice on an MP3, you might get a, a, a better idea of the realities of it. So that said, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about at least the escalation of energy that I use whenever I'm doing something. I'm going to cover what these energies are and why I escalate through them in the way that I do. And why you may want to follow a similar road with it. Well, the first thing to realize is with energy work, you don't want to go full throttle all at once unless you absolutely must go full throttle all at once. And even then, you're not really going full throttle. You're actually just jumping positions a bit. And the reason for this is because each degree of energy that you're pulling on is that much more taxing on the body overall, especially if you're not working your way up to or warming your way up to it. This is why so many mystical practices and martial arts practices and I should say uh, martial energy practices such as Qigong focus on grounding and centering your energy because if you decide you're going to just go from your base resting state to your maximum level you're likely to cause some injury this is the same as in sports and this is the same as in martial arts if you just go out into a boxing match without warming up you're gonna pull something probably you may not pull it real bad but i'm sure the other guy hitting you will pull something for you and that'll help so the first level of energy the first degree of energy that i use is just focus and focus is the raw intensity of thought you know it is putting your will and your mind on something and the direct energy that moves with that. After that, and the reason that is the first is because that is the root of all energy work. It is the first degree and is the first connection you must make. You could skip to any other degree, but you will use this one first. I do not care how good you think you are or how good you are or how good you may be or how, many good, how good other people might think you are. You're going to start with focus. Not everyone goes to the next two in the same order that I do and it's the order I learned them in. The next one would be key or key and that is the life force that I draw off of after that and I draw off my own personal key reserves but I also start to draw in at that point. I start to kind of pull in to my center and pull in the energy and recenter it and recompress it in that moment of doing energy work and this is the second degree is usually where it's usually where I can stop. I don't really need to do too much more than that because key and life force energy are more than enough. Now, that said, you know, just strengthening your key and hardening it and getting it in the right feel and flow is not always enough. And the third degree is where we start looking at that. And I have two different systems I use within that myself, and that is chakra work, which I am fairly well versed in the thing is I, t I think every once every two years I rememorize the terminology and beyond that I ne if you if you're not catching me on that once every two years I tend to forget the terminology and just focus on the feeling of the chakras and what they do and what I can sense from them and how I can balance them you know I'll forget the names of them and the colors because I don't do color spectrum anything for the most part uh, the colors are invented things because they give a certain feel to the idea. And a blind person will not see the color of a chakra, nor will a person who's colorblind. 
it really is a way for that filter up here to kind of process the information. Root key would be the next concept of that, and that's not just centering key and pulling it inward and becoming aware of your reserves that are already there and the key that is around you and in the area, but that's compression. That is exemplification of the key that exists within the root or sacral chakras in the, the Dantian, in basically the storage area of the body, in, in the, the energetic storage areas. And the reason the fourth degree is where it's at is because this is where the toll on the body is still not bad. The toll on the body, really the toll on the body doesn't become an issue until about the fifth degree. So I would say even then I would move to chakra and root key gong energy work, even hard key at this point, which I don't even have listed and I should have. Hard key, which is where you start focusing not just on yin key, which is a pulling in forces, but yang key so that you're pushing out, so that you're actually pushing those two energies against each other to generate something more in between the two. That would be that would be the third degree. The fourth degree is actually not so much a step up as it is a redefinition of existing energies, although it does pull from other places and it does sometimes pull from other planes and it pulls from those understandings that the universe is infinite and there are planes of existence and understanding that we just don't completely comprehend and the energy is coming from somewhere. And in that, in order to understand where it is coming from, we are personifying it and personalizing it. And this is, would be elemental energies or constructed energies. I group these two things together as the same. Elementals, while you will identify and psychologically will move towards them, still come from a greater power, and we'll get to that in a minute, as do constructed energies such as the soul sword technique, or such as mantric meditations that focus on certain sources, uh, ley line energies, energies of spirits such as the fae, the dwarves, the dragons, and every other pseudo-mythical creature, these are ways for your mind to understand an energy that it isn't fully comprehending, just as the elements are. The elemental energy of fire, if it were to truly be brought into this plane, would burn the world asunder because it's a concept. You're drawing on that concept to filter the energies through. This is so that you don't do what I do next, and that is hurt yourself. And that would be the divine energies that would be the Thor and Odic force Odinic forces for me and the Thor and Odinic forces are divine energy these are the concept of power outside of yourself you're now getting outside of things that your monkey brain can control you're getting outside of things that that make sense to you completely you're getting into things that are greater than you and yet you're still pulling on them and using them um, there are gonna be a lot of people out there that say that you should not use deific forces I say to them, they shouldn't be using any forces. If you're going to put limits on shit, then don't bother. Uh, moreover, there are going to be people out there that are going to talk about the balance, I'm sure. And if you didn't know, my thoughts are the balance is bunk. Karma is one more construct. It's a divine construct. And it's one that people bought into enough to generate it. But the karma, is the layman knows it is just silly. Uh, that's not reincarnative karma, which is in effect and is a part of life and the evolution thereof but it karma is more more along the lines of if you if you piss in your in your coffee cup it's going to taste bad that's karma so don't piss in your coffee cup odinic and thor forces are more than your body is supposed to handle and you know it you're aware of it you know these god forces the divine forces is more than you know you should be able to work with that's why when people draw on these things they tend to become exhausted. They, become, they tend to become worn out. It takes a lot out of you. For those that summon deities, little hint to you, you're already pulling on these powers. Someone had to tell you, right? Um, beyond that, we start moving into the source. Um, I'm going to give you the very brief version of what that is. The source is the essence of of origin for all power and you get to that by going in as deep as you can inward focusing inward until you have come to a point 
where you can go no further inward and then you must transcend that understanding and find a place even within that where the power itself is coming from and you must dive into that source where all power comes from until you may experience it outwardly in the world around you so that you are now moving inward to go outward this is a paradox it is the greatest paradox of mysticism ever known and it is the highest degree of difference in energies because at this point you are no longer differentiating fire from water or chakra from element you're recognizing all things come from the same source including your body and there is a bit of risk with this because if you're channeling this through your body at least you are now taking on more than your body is built to handle even with training there's going to be a limit to how wide you can open the floodgate to. The seventh degree is not a place. The seventh degree of energy work that I do is where I take everything I just said to you about opening the floodgates and being careful, toss that sucker out the window, I, I grab a hold of the safety valve, and I, I rip the safety valve off, and I pour into the source and let the source pour, pour into me until the line between who I am and what the universe is blurs. This is only dangerous if you are attempting to use the energy through your muscular system to generate physical results quicker. as a kind of gestalt because you now have it moving through a physical point. These things are not as dangerous when you're in the when you're in a state of trance or meditation, but they are not as physically rooted. And when you are moving to the physical burnout point, what you're saying is you're, you're, you're basically making a sacrifice of the body to act as a prime conduit for altering the world around you. You are using yourself as the piping for this energy. And that's dangerous. It is dangerous in that you have accepted the amount of harm you're going to take on so long as you get the job done. And really what you're saying at that point is that you're willing to die to do this. Now, a lot of people out there are going to criticize me for uh, going on this and doing this in about 12 minutes of video so far. And I intend to have this wrapped up before 15, so don't worry. And they're going to say, well, you know, what about the balance? And, you know, well, you said you don't believe in a balance or karma, so what's going to stop people from using this? The thing I'm going to tell you out there is if you are a person who's practicing dark arts, if you're a person who's going to use this for bad, there are people out there like me who are going to stop you. And here's the really neat part. Once you start connecting to the source, you recognize the sanctity of life. You recognize the strength of life. And in that, you recognize the need to protect it. So you may be able to use this and twist it for a time, but you will find something bigger and stronger than you. And that's why I'm not overly worried. Those who practice the dark arts generally never make it past the fifth degree. Um, I've met a few that have, maybe one or two, and that's after my entire lifetime. So this, this has been the Labyrinth episode, you know. I hope you took something from this. I hope it gives you an idea of the escalations of use of these energies. I'm sure your methods are going to be different than mine. I've explained why I do what I do the way I do. And I'm hoping that it may, I'm not hoping that you actually copy my method, but I'm hoping it wakes something up inside of you. That it wakes up something that is going to push you to do more. And I hope that that will be the night within.